Okay, girls. This is it. I know we fumbled the last time we faced off against McNally, but we were too eager then. I was too eager. Hell, I still am. I've wanted to be good enough to perform at the Stormlight since I was a little girl, and look, here, here I finally am. But that's the thing now, isn't it? McNally didn't win last time because they were good. They won thanks to a catastrophe of their own goddamn making, and everyone knows it. That's not going to work for them again. Not here. Not on this stage. The Stormlight is where true skill shines. And no amount of chaotic power from a bunch of fucking amateurs from the middle of nowhere will break this place's shields or their stage. And the crowds expect nothing but the best from their idols. The better group is going to come out on top today. And it's going to be Sagittaria. So, one last time, remember your choreo, throw them off rhythm however you can, watch out for their powers, and counter with your own whenever you get the opportunity. Rosette, I know you're going to be strong on that front. You'll be our pinch hitter for getting them off stage. Ashley, slow them down if you see any of us in a bind. Hannah, I, I know you're nervous, but like I said, lean into that. It'll work with your powers, you can take that to your advantage. Clarissa, get in their way, draw audience focus however you can with all your sweet flips. And Lizzie, just do what you can. God, just, uh, I swear to God, if you turn into a goddamn pony again, I will come over there and murder you myself. And remember, the most important thing of all, Vivi is mine. Don't get in my way. Now come on, girls. We've got a show to perform. Hey, uh, so, like, what happens if they all decide that, like, you're the biggest threat and stuff and, like, gang up to take you out first? Shut up, Lizzie. She is going to transform on stage into a Shetland pony. <laughs> and she is going to kick out with her back legs and kick you off the platform towards the edge of the stage. Oh, oh good. Okay. <sighs> I'm probably going to roll off. Oh, it's going to be so bad. <laughs> oh, okay. Yeah. So that's an eight. So on a seven to nine, you choose one. You either lash out verbally, you give ground, and your opposition gets an opportunity. You struggle past the pain and mark two conditions, or you detransform. Uh, I'm going to lash out verbally. Yeah, so you've been knocked by this, like, full-size Shetland pony off towards the edge of the stage. Now you're near where Valerie and Angie and Queen Bee are. A pony? Why, why are you a goddamn pony? Uh, and who are you provoking to foolhardy action? Um, probably Angie. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm it's okay. sorry. It's okay. She's the perfect person to provoke. <laughs> the foolhardy action. Yeah. Um, <laughs> also, because it makes sense, like, from the direction of where you flew, the pony is also going to kick your drums off the platform. <laughs> Oh boy, okay. When do I get to roll for stuff like burn? Well, first tell me what you're saying to Angie to provoke her, and then uh, you can roll your burn. Why did you all leave me alone? I just got kicked off the pedestal by a pony. And I'm just going to gesture to the pony. <laughs> <laughs> Deal with that. <laughs> got it. All right, now you can roll your burn. And you get to, you'll, you'll probably have a pretty good chance on this because you've got three conditions marked. Yeah. <laughs> Let's hope I get a 10 plus. Nope. Mm, nope. Oops, sorry. That uh, is an 8. Uh, so you do need to mark one more. Um, is, I guess I'm not sure how it would work, is, but is this something that we could... Uh, yeah, can we use team? Oh, that's a good question. Can team points help with the burn roll? I mean, it doesn't say anything about not being able to. 
I guess it's like, it depends on what Jaden is actually doing to charge up. I think Jaden's powers are fully emotional based. So whether whether or not his negative or positive, depending on how strong that emotion is, that's probably how he kind of charges up. Maybe if you want to, you can say some supportive words as you like, mm-hmm. <laughs> go get this pony. <laughs> <laughs> So two of you would have to do that to bring it to a 10, though. Okay. I have something. Oh, sure. Come on, Jay, then. This is not your first rodeo. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, her pun repertoire is expanding. <laughs> yeah, it's part of these. Okay. That definitely makes him smart at the very least. <laughs> and I think without turning, Valerie says, like, come on, Elementum, I know you can do this. He, like, gives out a long sigh. <sighs> she try and calm himself down and then nods. Yeah. All right. So you're back up at your full three burn. And in that case, <laughs> is everybody going to converge on this pony? I guess. Um, I feel like it should be Angie first because she was provoked yeah. into doing it. So she's definitely sure. going to directly engage. And she's going to be trying to body check that pony off of the stage. <laughs> Yeah, the pony is jumping off the platform at this point. And <laughs> you can tell she's like kind of like trying to concentrate and change back, but I think she's not very good at it yet. So she mostly just like vibrates on stage, giving you an opportunity to chase and do what you want with this pony. Okay, do I get any bonuses on top of that for that opportunity or? Sure, I'll give you plus one for that. Yeah. That's another kapow, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. Whoa. And our binary pals. Very good. That's a 14. Uh, and that was a another directly engaged. What would you like to do? So I feel like she reacted without fully thinking about what she was going to do. But uh, she's going to run up intending to body check. But maybe she just does this like Kamehameha style, just burst of force that knocks this horse off the stage. Yes! I, I think that, I feel like there's also like a burst of fireworks when you do it to complete that Kamehameha kind of look to it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Diana and Ashley are like d- <laughs> bitching to each other on the ground and like, what the fuck happened? <laughs> what, what, what did they do? Um, they, they both look up at the same time and they see this pony like just coming down towards <laughs> Oh, and they just both barely get out of the way. <laughs> I love this fight. <laughs> mm-hmm. And Angie kind of like flips her hair and looks at Jaden and she says, are you good now? And she put, reaches her hand down to help him up. Hopefully I can help him to his feet. Yes. Jaden like nods silently and grabs um, her by the arm and pulls himself up. Sorry. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I think this is the perfect time for before when I said I had a, a cool idea, but it would be good for later in the fight because All right. I'm going to say this is about the time where we reached the part of the song where everything went wrong before with the big drawn out, it's a downpour. And Vivi actually takes a step back from Empath Esquire and throws her own sword up in the air, which maybe for a moment looks like a you know, you don't have a sword, so I'm tossing my own sword, but it goes up in the air and then turns into, you know, a whole mass of swords around the stage, because uh, I think at at this point, all of our group is gathered at the front of the stage and I guess everyone else on the stage except for Empath Esquire is on the back, so these swords are going to rain down, but instead of actually attacking my goal is to just create like a field of swords that make it difficult to move around in since a lot of what Sagittaria has been doing has been like acrobatics and sort of dancing around and so I'm, I'm just trying to uh, unleash my powers to reshape the environment and make it difficult for them to keep moving around the way they have been. All right is this like a dome or more like a wall do you think? I was thinking of like you know, this sort of thing that, that anime do a lot where there's a flat field with swords sticking up out of it all over. Oh, like the shot where like it's a dramatic sunset and it's a war-torn battlefield and there's just swords stuck out of the ground everywhere. Yeah, so the idea being that 
it is possible to move around between them, but it's going to be difficult to, like, do flips or anything like that and not, like, end up running into one of these... Yeah, like not get singed on an energy sword. Yeah, you know, you have to look where you're stepping so you don't run into one. I love that a lot, and I, I really hope it works. It's awesome. So, roll that unleash. And this was several sessions ago, but as you may have noticed, I write things down, and there was a point where we had downtime, and I said that uh, Valerie was just practicing control over her powers. And, right. And uh, wrote down that that would give me a plus one to the next time I unleashed. So take that plus one as well, definitely. <laughs> oh, wow. Ooh, oh, no. One and a two on the dice. Plus three is six. So I've got some holds left over. Ooh. Yeah. It's yeah. the best time to use it. All right. And how do you think you're helping? Are, are you, like, giving an encouraging word or, like, doing something physical? Or what do you think? Fuck them up, Vivi! <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> and your, your parents gasp in the audience, like, my word. <laughs> Where did she learn that language? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely from the Fortnites. Yeah, that's it. The Fortnites. Yeah. I'm dead. <laughs> yeah. That's what the kids these days like. Yeah, her mom yelling at Freddy just this morning. <laughs> She's your mom has like a surprise Pikachu face right now. <laughs> so you give Valerie that encouraging word, which is just enough to like the you Valerie, you can feel that this move again is like more than you're used to doing, and you can feel like the possibility that it could like get out of control again, the same way that it did before. But as the swords start to come down, and you hear like Angie, who was being so reserved with you before, just give this wholehearted word of like support, mm -hmm. <laughs> gives you like just the pushover that you need to like get the swords under control and going down exactly where you want them to. Yeah, absolutely. So now you just have Empath Esquire on your side, and you've got. Sister Spectacular and Dame Divine on the other side of the sword field, contemplating their next move. And, sorry, uh, also for Unleash Your Powers, it is uh, 7 to 9, mark condition where the effect is unstable or temporary. I am going to mark, so I've already got angry marked, uh, I'm going to mark insecure because I, like, that almost went really bad again, and I got it, but that was still, like, a flashback moment. Mm -hmm. I think that makes sense. So now you're all near the front. Empath Esquire is near the front with you as well. And she's like, oh, this is not going to end the way that you want it to. I will make sure of that. And she like spreads her hands out. And now without the monocle, she's just going to like spread out a wave of this colorful aura with her hands. And she's spreading a wave of fear towards all of you, uh, which if you think about it, it means that she's also afraid but she's trying to use that fear to affect all of you. I just have an idea. Yeah, sure. Um, I think right now it's probably the least positive Jaden has looked. Mm -hmm. He's not smiling. And he kind of just turns and glares at Empath Esquire. And just in front of her, the ground kind of quakes. And then a rocky hand just like bursts out of the ground. Yo. And then another, and just a rock golem emerges from up in front of her from the Ooh. ground <laughs> as I use two burns to make a construct an animated construct oh. in front of wow. her and, and basically yes. take the hit damn and yeah he just like looks at her and says no and then that happens <laughs> it bursts out of the ground <laughs> and it, I don't know if it just takes the hit for us I don't know I just want to get it to block the empath ray basically well it's definitely going to make empath more afraid that's for sure <laughs> <laughs> um, and it does like weaken the strength of the wave that she's sending at all of you I'm going to say Jaden you are defending your team so I'm going to have you roll defend someone and I'm going to have you roll with a plus one with the help from the golem Ooh, I don't know how much that's going to help <laughs> but let's see um, oh whoa okay yeah, <laughs> yeah. alright finally a well deserved 12 <laughs> He was just not having it, apparently. <laughs> no, not at all. You can hear a, a whoop from uh, Aunt Jen in the audience, like, yeah! 
Oh, that, that gets him to smile a little bit. Just a cracks a little smile. Yeah. <laughs> Alright, yeah, so your, your golem manages to, like, stand with its arms and legs, like, spread out in a very intimidating manner that not only, like, intimidates Empath Esquire, but also, like, intimidates the two idols in the back who are, like, still trying to figure out how to move around the, like, sword field. And now they super don't want to get close. <laughs> yeah, so on a 12... Uh, so you keep your team safe, and you get to choose one from the following list. Add a team to the pool, take influence over someone you protect, or clear a condition. Ooh, I, I'm gonna clear a condition. Yes, <laughs> I do. Makes sense, makes sense. Yeah. I think so. Um, what are you clearing? I think he's feeling less hopeless. Yeah! Because one of his things finally worked out, mm-hmm. and it seems to be working pretty damn well. Mm-hmm. All right, so so Empath is being kind of, like, frightened into, like, uncertainty. You've got the two idols in the back. Whatever anyone is doing to these three on their next moves, I'm going to give you a plus one for it. Nice. Can I try an uppercutter off of the stage? Yes. Okay. <laughs> yes, you may. Uh, that's another directly engage a threat. Plus one. <laughs> All right, still a respectable seven. You needed the plus yeah. one, apparently. I guess I did, yeah. All right, I think uh, to represent that, you definitely knock Empath off the stage. Um, she lands in a heap on top of Maid Marvelous, who's just managed to transform back into her human form. Uh, and now you just kind of have a tangle of girls on the floor. Um, and Diana is, like, fuming. Can I wink at Diana? Yes. Oh, please do. I do. You can see Diana getting up and, like, literally hopping mad, like, oh, f- fuck you! <laughs> <laughs> fuck you and fuck all your friends <laughs> and at, normally Rosette is the one to like bring her calm her down in these moments and none of the people who are down there with her really know how to do that very well uh, Ashley just looks kind of uncomfortable <laughs> <laughs> two left two left at this point I think Dame Divine Rosette is going to like realize wait a minute I can just fly <laughs> over this thing uh, she was a little like <laughs> thrown by like the chaos of what was going on, but she's starting to get her like brain more around the situation. Like, okay, I'm just gonna go over this. It's gonna be fine. She summons her feathers to form uh, wings on her back, and she does the same move that she did on that fateful Saturday, where she like starts to float up above the sword field. She doesn't take Sister Spectacular with her because I think she can only focus on herself at the moment. And Sister Spectacular kind of gives her a look like, hey, take me with you. No, hey, stop it. Um, But Dame Divine is now like flying at you now. And I think because you made the sword field and because you're the leader, she's going to come at Valerie. Like an avenging angel, she's summoning more feathers and forming them into a, a feather sword that hardens enough to threaten. Oh, I know what I'm going to do, because this is the second half of the sort of anime trope here, which is I'm going to start grabbing swords off of the stage and throwing them at her in the air, <laughs> one by one. Love it. I love, <laughs> love it. it. Amazing. <laughs> all right. I know there's a lot of directly engaging going on, but this is all great stuff. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> That's the idea. Oh, a seven. Okay. So what would you like to take from directly engage on that one? Uh, I'm going to create an opportunity for my allies. As I'm now sort of running through my own field of swords, throwing them at Rosette while she's in the air. All right. I think I know what I'm going to do here, because you're, you're not resisting or avoiding her blows. Correct. So it's going to be similar to what happened at the beginning of the song where you've got her mm-hmm. attention focused on you and you're throwing your swords at her. She's using her sword to like fend them off as best she can, but it means that she's focused entirely on you and not seeing anything else. But she is going to use her sword kind of like a lance and jab directly towards you. You are still near the edge of the stage uh, and I'm going to have you take a powerful blow. Ooh, all right. It's with two conditions. Ooh. So that's it's a, a nine. nine. That's not a 10. That's good. So you either lash out verbally, give ground, struggle past the pain, or detransform. Okay, I am going to... I think this would be a really interesting time to detransform. Ooh. I think I'm sort of 
running along the edge of the stage in one direction, trying to lead her away from the rest of the group while throwing my swords on the stage at Rosette. And then I get to the end and she catches up with me and I grab the closest one of the sword and hold it up to defend. And it's sort of a mirror of when I attacked Empath Esquire before I tried to defend, but after exerting myself even more than the previous storm, I try to defend myself with the sword, and she cuts right through it with hers, and I stumble backward and de-transform. And then you see Valerie with Rosette behind her in almost like an Iron Man-style pose with the sword in the air behind her. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and mark my Doom track, because I think that is appropriate at this point. I think so, too. Hell yeah. It's not exactly talking about it openly, but it is open. Yes, it is making that information open in a big way. Mm -hmm. Valerie is kind of close to the curtain side of the stage and partially in shadow, so it's not immediately over for her as far as secret identity goes, but she is now in a very vulnerable position in that regard if she moves too much. I think it's been a while since we talked about it, but just as a reminder, part of my doom being tied to my contract with Rain Shadow Records is that they wanted to keep my identity as Valerie separate from the persona of Violence Violets so that they could revoke that and turn someone else into Violence Violet if they wanted to revoke my contract. Mm. And how is everyone else reacting to this right now? Uh, stunned, I think. Yeah, same. I'm not sure Jaden's seen anyone, like, de-transform like mid battle so he's he's definitely like staring a bit shocked at what just happened i'm angry oh <laughs> i'm marking angry that ah. hits close to home you don't rip someone's mask off in front in on a stage i think that makes sense yeah yeah i don't even know if rosette meant to do that necessarily but it doesn't matter it happened yeah I think I'd like to use my stage fighting move, which allows me to, when engaging a forward in front of an audience, to mark one condition to use superior instead of danger. Alright, so you're going for Rosette with this? Oh hell yes. I'm going for the wings. I'm gonna grab them and see if I can rip them off. Alright. Yes. And it's a miss. So that's a six. <sighs> Any team? Anybody? Yeah, you still have two team and you have Angie's hold as well. Perfect. Okay, so... I'm going to just plant one foot on her back, grab both of her wings at the root, and just poof, until I rip them out. That's what I'm taking from her. All right, and Angie, how are you helping? Um, You know those cheerleader bases where she just props down on her knees so that uh, B can vault on my hands and I can propel her enough for her to be able to kind of fly over and just really gracefully rip them off of her. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, you get the sense that, like, B wants to move forward and you give her a signal like, I got you. And then you do that. <laughs> so you vault directly towards Rosette. She barely has time to react as she hears, like, something whooshing towards behind her. You land just behind her on her back and, like, grab the wings and use your gravity and momentum combined to pull them out. And they're not, like, attached, like, there's no blood. <laughs> yeah, I just, like, disperse them. But yeah, the, the feathers do, like, burst, and the feathers go everywhere, and then they dissipate. And you are coordinated enough to not, like, land on your butt. You, like, do another, like, flip and land on your feet. <laughs> but you aren't picking resist or avoid their blows, and she does still have her sword, so... Rosette is going to react to this and she's staring very coldly at you and she just says she wanted this so badly and swings the sword hard in your direction. I'm going to have you take a powerful blow. Taking the blow? Oh. That's a seven. So, oh, close, oh, so close. So close. <sighs> I give ground. Okay. So yes, you are close enough to the edge of the stage that this sword swings around towards you, hits you with enough force to knock you just off balance enough to tip you off the edge of the stage, and... Damn. Yeah. Even though you are pretty coordinated, and you... I'm gonna say you even do manage to, like, land, like, 
horizontally like on the side of the stage that's still off the stage it's still out of bounds <sighs> um i'm i'm going to definitely give queen bee influence over me as a result of this all right oh, okay Ooh. Jaden is angry. Okay. Yeah, and now that there's fewer swords on the stage because Valerie pulled a bunch of them out, there's a clearer path for Sister Spectacular to get to the front now. And she sees that um, Queen Bee is engaged. Valerie looks vulnerable and she's running straight at Valerie. And she's looking like she's going to try and like make for a grab and like do like a flip to flip her off the stage. Can I defend? Yes. So um, as part of the bull's heart playbook <laughs> when i leap to defend my love or rival in oh, battle yes. i roll plus danger instead of plus savior to defend them i love yes. it yes this is so good <laughs> <laughs> all right so you get to roll defend with plus danger here we go and i hit perfect yes. that's a 12 that's so <laughs> perfect so on a hit, you keep Valerie safe and you get to either add a team to the pool, take influence over someone you protect, or clear a condition. I'm going to add a team to the pool. Alrighty, sounds good. What do you do to get Sister Spectacular from hitting Valerie? I'm probably going to pull her out of the way. Just like use my strength and yank her out of the way. Alright, that's more than fair. She manages to land kind of on her feet because she's pretty good at that, but you definitely kept her from like actually attacking Valerie and put her on a different path. And now she's got you in her sights now. I'm okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> and she's going to try and run at you and sweep the leg underneath you. Does anybody want to aid Angie or, do, or, or Angie, are you handling this yourself? Um, I can try to directly engage again. <laughs> if you need a team pool, I'll definitely jump in. <laughs> but I don't think my defend role is oh, very good. I just rolled it. Yeah, sorry. Oh, never mind. Well, we'll save it for your next one. <laughs> yep, never mind. That was a 13. And you won't be leveling for a while, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> so in that case, I'm going to do a thing where I kind of do a ballet spin out of the way. And um, it looks like, you know, Valerie, you might even get scared for a second because it seems like I'm just putting you in the line of the fire. But then I just like kick her in the back so she's pulled <laughs> on the stage. <laughs> or off the stage, <laughs> not on the stage. <laughs> So now, you are really only left with Rosette, Dame Divine, on the stage left, who has managed to knock one of yours off the stage, but she definitely is still looking threatening herself. Her wings were dissipated, but she can pretty easily summon them back, and she's starting to do that now, and she's still got her feather sword with her, and she is looking to try and get airborne again, so it's harder to hit her. Okay. I'm gonna say Angie's mad. Yeah. Angie is um, so I'm marking it angry for right for Angie just for and you get a plus one to ongoing to unleash your powers while you're angry because of your thick and thin skinned I think probably when she detransformed Valerie also like fell backwards not enough to fall off the stage but she's been sort of dumbstruck and is only just getting to her feet now at a momentum he looks at Dame Divine and then to his construct and oh yeah I almost forgot it was still there oh yeah <laughs> yeah it's still there to the end of the scene so it's the stone golem is just standing there he's gonna look to the stone golem and then what you see is like it's right arm kind of like crumbles off and it's replaced with just it's like magma in the form of an arm and then its legs kind of crumble and are replaced with just like a single swelling tornado and its right arm crumbles up and is replaced with like floating, flowing water. It's gonna attack Dame Divine and I'm gonna use Reality Storm as I roll Freak to attack and knock her hopefully off with my column. Yeah. And I'm just gonna say <laughs> up front, there's gonna be collateral damage because I don't have enough burn to stop one, <laughs> stop collateral damage. <laughs> <I'm> sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's if this even works out because my luck with rolls have not been good. Um, <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna uh, help out with that. I'm gonna use a team if I can. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Maybe I would try to like pull uh, Dame Divine's focus onto Bane Raven just by like running at her 
and like yelling. <laughs> sure, or you could pull that like big jump move again that you pulled with them before. Oh yes, yes, uh, that's exactly what uh, what Bane Raven will do. Yeah, mm-hmm. just without the intent to like knock the living daylights out of them. This time, <laughs> yeah, that's what I'll do. So Bane Raven just like does a running leap as if she's going to come right up and uh, throw her back down to the ground again. Awesome. Oh, okay. And uh, so as the golem, like, charges towards Dame Divine, because sound is just the compression of air, can I say that as it's moving, you kind of hear the sound of what would have been drum beats as Jaden remembers that he's the drum of the group and still needs to keep some kind of beat. <laughs> so um, with with the golem's movement, there is a beat that is going along with the yeah. music as it just charges and shoulder checks Dame Divine. And I'm going to take something from them. I'm going to take the stage from them. Okay. <laughs> um, yeah, they just shoulder check Dame Divine and just keep running. Like she's like kind of almost pinned to the contract as it keeps running and just off the stage with her. Yeah, and I think the most she can do to resist is like she'll try to shoot more like feather daggers out at you and she'll do that and you'll mark a condition for it but it barely matters because your golem is like sending her like off the stage with like the biggest damn flourish you can muster and it's amazing (laughs) and I'm gonna mark guilty because it means because I didn't use a second burn it's gonna be collateral damage yeah (laughs) He's go to whatever damage happens after this. I don't know. It's up to you. <laughs> yeah, actually, so you send her flying down harder than you intended to. And because this golem is coming down with her, it's coming down towards all of the members of Sagittaria and threatening to, like, squash them. And they all get out of the way, but the golem comes, like, crashing down near the edge of the, like, power barrier. Uh, and it's big and strong enough that it actually kind of, like, breaks the edge of the barrier with a fist, like, just with enough physical force to, like, hit a key component and make the barrier ripple and spark with electricity that sends a few sparks out towards the audience, and the audience kind of screams, like, ah! Mm, And, like, nobody's seriously hurt by this, but it is enough to scare people. But otherwise, you were successful. All members of Sagittaria have been knocked off the stage, and the song comes to an end. So there's like a moment when the music stops, and Bane Raven is panting. And then she just does like a, yeah! <laughs> and the crowd seems hesitant at first because they were just like almost shocked. But then they, they feel the energy of the moment too. And then there's a, an uproarious <laughs> cheer for all of you. With a, the, the, the lights turn like Technicolor following Karen's lead in the front row. Her cheers, you can even hear hers, even though her cheers are a little bit softer than everyone else's. Alice is cheering hard for you, Valerie. Your parents, Angie, are like clapping and like they look proud of you. And <laughs> it's been a long time since they looked genuinely proud of you. Alan, your mom is like, she's crying actually. She's so, like, even though you're standing on the side of the stage, oh she knows God. that you won and you performed so well. She's like so proud of you. Jen is cheering for you. Jaden, you can see Petra. She even, like, turns her phone so you can see your parents and Alicia, the tiny forms of them, cheering for you from their couch. Aww. Jaden, like, cries a little bit, for sure. (laughs) Who else is in the audience? Ms. Doyle is in the audience. She's cheering for you as well. Uh, Yasmin and a bunch of the drama club members are there. Sophia is there. You recognize people who took selfies with you in the Neon District are there. You see a bunch of people from your school. Even Papaya is clapping for you because she's just that impressed. You see, like, some Technicolor pink and blue puffs of vape coming up from the back. So you know Vaporwave are back there. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, they made it. (laughs) Um, And uh, you can spot uh, Lorraine from McCready's bar there. And she's standing there with another woman her age, who you would guess is probably her wife. Aww. I guess we're going to try and see if we can get B back on the stage so that we can play our set. 
Yes! <laughs> also, the lady from the bar in the back is like, Probably looking at Valerie and going, yeah, she was she was not of age to, to go into that. <laughs> yeah, but she's not going to ban you from the bar just yet. I, mean, I feel like it was more of a, I knew it. <laughs> she just gives us a sage nod and her wife is like, uh-huh. Yeah. Cool. I just wanted to call that out since you mentioned her. Yeah. <laughs> As everybody's regrouping, though. Okay, this is mean, but Valerie, I need you to take another powerful blow. <laughs> I Mm -hmm. think that totally makes sense. You feel something hit your back, um, searing in your back, and you realize that it's an arrow from Diana in the audience section. Oh, okay. I I thought that was just take a powerful blow because this is, uh, you know, terrifying and humiliating. But that's... That makes sense, too. No, you can see... Well, maybe you can't see because you're reeling from the pain, but everyone else can see. Diana has taken the shot. Her eyes are red. Tears are streaming down her face. Mm -hmm. And she looks enraged and defeated. Okay. Uh Uh-huh. That's another hit with a nine. I think this time I'm going to mark two conditions. I think, yeah. Definitely afraid. And hopeless. Yeah, and there's already people who are like there's an opening in the barrier that opens up and there's already like venue security coming in to like take Diana. They're restraining her from using her powers any further. They've got their own like power dampening stuff with them so they that she can't hurt them um, and they're taking her away but she's done what she wanted. The rest of her group follow off behind her. Mm-hmm. I think this is a good opportunity to pause and go over what happens when you lose sync with your powers. It says, you lose sync with your powers, you transport back to your regular form, the GM shifts any two of your labels, and you cannot transform again until you either clear two conditions or a new scene starts. Oh, that's true, yeah. I forgot to shift your labels when you detransformed. Mm-hmm. That's definitely going to be a mundane up and a superior down, I'm going to say, because that's like taking your superiority in the situation away from you. Mm -hmm. Okay. The arrow, like, you can tell, like, it wasn't charged full power, so it doesn't, like, do, like, a serious like, burn injury to you. Mm -hmm. But it was enough to knock you over and you definitely are going to have, like, a big red mark on your back the next day. Mm -hmm. I think Jaden runs over to help Valerie up. Are you Valerie okay? Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I guess we did it. Uh, we won. Yeah. Yeah, you can hear in the background, like the announcer is announcing technical difficulties. We'll be right back with the rest of Rhythmix's show after this break. But you can barely pay attention to that as you're all like paying more attention to Valerie. I mean, I knew we could do it. Didn't think it'll be this taxing. Jaden kind of like rubs his toe bone from when he got knocked off by a pony. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like that's going to be fine when you detransform, but right now it really hurts. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, out of character, how do we clear conditions for Valerie? Um, because the announcer just called a break, I'm going to let you guys go back to your dressing room to recoup and bandage up Valerie. Okay. Um, while everyone's like, not quite celebrating because Valerie is hurt, but like happy that we won. I have to ask this question. <laughs> um, is there fear in anyone's eyes when they look at me? Uh, you do see a few people flinch when you look directly at them. Not everybody does, but some people do. Uh, okay. I think that's just the people that you're celebrating with, not like bystanders. That's the triumphant celebration, right? Yeah. Yeah, you're trying to do the, the team triumphant celebration in the green room with everybody yeah i think that's fair like even though valerie just got hurt i think you're all still feeling pretty good that you beat sagittaria and you did it without like seriously harming any of them i was only making sure because i did like cause a decent amount of collateral damage yeah so i was wondering if that caused any of our teammates to be a little bit worried or scared of me no 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 okay then i can mark potential and carry one forward all right. Does anybody else want to do their tr- sharing a triumphant celebration move? 
Okay. When you share a triumphant celebration with someone, make them your lover rival immediately to mark potential. If they're already your level rival, take influence over them and mark potential. Oh. So you would already have influence over Valerie, it looks like, but that just means that you would get to shift Valerie's labels in that case. Yeah. Um, I don't have uh, Angie having influence over me. I have. A, oh, it's marked on. Yeah, it's written on Angie's mine sheet. that uh, I have influence over her. Okay. Unless I meant for. Well, maybe it got erased before. No, I don't think I took that away recently, if I ever did. Okay, then that may just be wrong. Yeah, I'm not sure who's right in this case. I'll just, I'll, I'll let you mark the potential regardless, for sure. And we I'm, we, we just solidify that mm -hmm. um, Angie has influence over Valerie. If you do have influence, then you can shift my labels. So I think that would be interesting, too. Yeah, sure. I'm going to raise your superior... Or no, sorry, up up your freak and lower your mundane. <laughs> sure. Try and inspire right. you to get your powers back. <laughs> oh, just one question. So Diana just, just shot Valerie and we let this slide? Well, you haven't had a moment to figure out what you're doing yet because they got shuffled away and you got shuffled back to your dressing room. Okay. Yeah, she did get grabbed by security. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah, it's not that we um, that we didn't want to. It was more that we didn't get an opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, I think Valerie is a little too shell-shocked still to celebrate right now. That's fair. I think now we can move into what the effects of this look like. So I think um, when we go back into like the, the green room, the uh, change rooms, mm -hmm. the backstage, when we go backstage... Um, I think if Valerie doesn't mind, Jane's probably like trying to not keep her steady because I doubt it, she's struggling to walk, but he's trying to, he's just staying by her because he's not entirely sure anyone else won't try to shoot her <laughs> at this point. But um, <laughs> he's like, we actually, we did it. I mean, I didn't doubt we would, but we, we did it. Uh, it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, you did that. That was... That was amazing. You did a great job. Um, yeah, I, I wish I had a little bit more control, um, especially of the golem. No, that I mean that that was that was amazing. Um, I'm sorry. I just I I wasn't expecting that out there. I'm not I'm not sure what to do now. No, no, it's, it's fine. I don't think any of us were expecting it, and I, I kind of like look at everyone else like, no. definitely not. <laughs> like there was a horse on stage. Yeah. Why was there a horse on stage? Well, it wasn't on stage for long. <laughs> Thank you for that, by the way. I'm I'm really sorry I, I shouted at you. I just, I didn't expect a horse. I kind of got caught off guard. Uh, that's okay. It, um, it alerted me to the horse and then I knocked it off the stage. So I think, I think it worked out. Yeah. I, I think I need to work on defending myself a little bit better though. Even from surprise horses. Um. Yeah. Um, Valerie's starting to like calm down a little and you know they've, they've sort of returned to their dressing room and uh, thank you everyone for, for defending me there. I, I really needed that and uh, I appreciate it. Hey, you did what you had to to stay on that stage and protect us too. And I know it didn't go how you wanted, but it was still really cool. When you started throwing those swords, I was like, whoa. Yeah, Valerie's blushing at, at this now. And don't worry, honestly, with everything that was going around, nobody's going to remember your face. Yeah, yeah. Um, I hope so. I, shit, that's part of my contract is I'm not supposed to tell anyone, but I guess... Well, um, we still got to put on the rest of the show, right? Yeah. Sorry, Valerie, I'm going to have you mark another Doom Dread because you're talking about it openly. I figured that was the yeah. case. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I'm being aggressive with it because we haven't marked your Doom in a while. <laughs> yep. That's exactly on sync with that. Now, how to... 
Valerie, are you able to transform again? Um, I, I don't know. Let me see. And, uh, actually, this is, uh, something that she did before while she was already transformed, but, um, is having the same trouble here where she reaches out and tries to make a sword that's the, the first part of her transformation, and it starts to form and then dissipates like fog. Okay, sit down, take a breather. Uh, I just uh, open the door. Hey, we were promised fancy sodas. Oh, yeah, and you you hear like a gopher going like, right away, and, and th- they go to run, get you sodas. I forgot about the fancy soda. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You just need to get your blood sugar up. Don't worry. Yeah, we did good. Obviously, there a little bit of some slip-ups, but I mean, that's just part of getting better. We drowned them. We really did. So, um, my mundane is minus two. <laughs> mine is minus one. I think I have the highest. Do I have the highest Somebody mundane right now? Somebody else has minus one, I think, <laughs> <Yes>. too. <laughs> I'll roll. Let's hope I do okay. Yeah. <laughs> Maybe if we, if we have some team... Yeah, you do still have team. Yeah. This is a team discussion. Ooh, okay, we've got one team. Okay, we can just add one. <laughs> yeah, so you got a six. Yes. You just need one team. I think, uh, Queen Bee, you were, you were initiating this as well, so I think it makes sense to, that you would be using a team. I think a fancy soda is worth uh, an extra point. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> it's Mandarin. As uh, Jaden and everybody is talking to Valerie and comforting her, the gopher arrives with uh, a big tub of sodas in, like, ice water and ice cubes. And that's enough to push it over. Mm-hmm. Th- thank you. Thank you. I think you're right. I think we... Uh, I was really worried about losing control again, and I I guess I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I didn't do it in a way that got everyone hurt. I think you should have a lot more control, if that helps any. Yeah. Uh, and I'm going to clear Hopeless. Aww. There is now hope in the situation again. So I guess I think you all just sort of like chill for as long as you need to within the, the time constraints that you're given. I think out on stage they're they're doing some kind of like... <laughs> Actually, you can probably hear the stage. You hear a familiar voice out on stage, or at least um, Angie and Queen Bee are familiar with it. You hear... The voice of Zero Degrees giving a product pitch about Crimson Signal technology. It's an ad break in the middle of your show. Poise. Grace. Perfection. These are the three qualities that any serious idol should strive for. In their performances, in their promotion, and of course, in their products. Hi, I'm Zero Degrees. You may know me from my unforgettable appearances on the iFactor and the Cadence 2020 Summer Mega Live Spectacular. And I'm here to tell you about the amazing line of super idle technology and equipment available from the fine folks at Crimson Signal. Have you polished your idle skills to a state of gleaming brilliance but can't seem to get a leg up in showbiz? It could be your environment that's failing you. Put yourself on a platform worthy of your star power with Crimson Signal's new line of beautiful high-tech stages. Whether you need a permanent venue installation, a slick ultra-portable solution for touring, or the latest and greatest in cutting-edge hard-like spectacle, Crimson Signal guarantees top-of-the-line quality of construction and unparalleled customer service, all at astounding prices. Call a Crimson Signal representative today at one 888 idle that's one 888 idle to get your free quote and consultation. Please note that the first quote is free, but consultation has a $50 per hour fee. Crimson Signal reserves the right to call for multiple quotes and consultations depending on the complexity of the client's needs. All quotes after the second have a $100 revision surcharge. Call our sister company Crimson Signal Lending LLC for assistance in the financing of purchases or fees. I'll see you up there on the big stage soon, darlings. Mm. Uh, we didn't use that technology. What are they even doing here? It's actually zero degrees, so it's a recording. You're not sure because you can't see the stage, but as you listen and you hear enough pre-produced audio elements that you can guess that this is a pre-recorded video that they're showing on, like, the projector screen. Okay. Something's weird. And then you hear the message end off with 
Crimson Signal is proud to sponsor the Stormlight tonight. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Did we see any tech from them? No, you didn't. That's the thing. They were planning to put, like, their disco ball in, and that's probably what they paid for. <laughs> but Rain Shadow's okay. uh, counter request negated that. Okay. Ooh. I got worried for a second. You weren't being affected by their tech tonight, but that doesn't mean they don't get to shill. Yeah, yeah I guess. Because <laughs> they paid for something to happen. <laughs> All right, so is taking a break before we go back on stage, is that enough to be a new scene? Yes, definitely. I'm also going to say, because you just took a rest, everybody can clear one condition, in addition to any conditions you've already cleared this scene. Oh, good. Okay. I am no longer angry. Me neither. I am no longer insecure. Because we won. Yes. <laughs> I'm also clearing angry. Still afraid and insecure, but... Yep. That still seems appropriate. Mm -hmm. Alright, so after you've had your break, and Crimson Signal is done shilling their thing, <laughs> Valerie, you retransform. You get one more label shift. Mm -hmm. And if I could make a recommendation, I would recommend raising Savior. <laughs> savior, yeah. I'm putting Savior <laughs> up by one. And... Say danger down by one. Valerie's feeling less dangerous. Okay. And you still have one team point in the pool. You've made very good use of it this session. Yes. <laughs> but that's the payoff of all of your preparations. <laughs> yeah, we did prepare pretty good. To be honest, mainly because of me, but... Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, so, so once everybody is retransformed and ready to give it another go... Also, Valerie, you being transformed into Violence Violet makes the pain in your back not really that noticeable. It will be back once you untransform. Mm -hmm. But for right now, you're good. You head back out on stage to, again, uproarious applause from everyone in the audience, people you recognize, people you don't. You swear the crowd size has grown <laughs> since you left the stage. Like, new people have come in to see. I think they might even be people who are like, I don't care about the stupid, like, gimmick fight. I just want to see Rhythmix perform. Oh. Oh. oh my god. Everyone, our flyering is paying off. Oh, <laughs> it's working. <laughs> yeah, you can see people who, like, some of people are definitely holding, like, Karen's flyers. <laughs> <laughs> and, yeah, you head back out on stage. You all get in your positions to start on the set that you had planned from the beginning. Take... A deep breath to start and begin your set. And as you're you're doing your performance, it's going well, and you're building to your final original number, I'm gonna have Valerie roll It's Time for My Solo for her impressive like singing solo and then I'm gonna have you all roll idle activities for the finishing move okay so it's just rolls plus savior yeah so it's time for my solo whenever you put your heart into a performance or impassioned speech with the intent to evoke a specific reaction in one or more people roll plus savior so how does this go for Valerie I'm literally crossing my fingers here a uh, nine nine, nine. So, does anyone want to use the last team point? Oh, true, yeah. Well, I mean... That means you won't, it won't be available for idle activities, but yes. Ooh, that's true. Um, I guess Jaden could help, Elementum could help. Just, like, really punctuating her mm -hmm. singing with the beat of his, um, his drums and cymbals and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, hitting the high top whenever it seems dramatically appropriate. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think that's perfect. So yeah, you can definitely take that to a 10 with that. All right, on a 10 plus, your audience is completely won over. Even your enemies may feel their hearts stir with emotion, if only for a moment. Take plus mm. one on your next move and choose one additional effect. I'm going to say I've inspired my friends and I'm going to add plus one back to the team pool. Perfect. <laughs> so you essentially <laughs> got a free team there. Mm -hmm. Nice. You got, a, you got the free 10 plus to completely win over your audience everybody's cheering even the Sagittaria fans have to admit like okay I guess they're cool <laughs> <laughs> and as they're all cheering you on this energy carries you through the whole rest of your set 
Vivi's vocals have a power and grace behind them that gets the crowd pumped up and feeling the rock pop of all these songs that you're covering. The precision of Queen Bee's dance moves punctuate Valerie's singing and especially make any of the electronic sections of the songs absolutely sing. During the instrumental sections, Bane Raven gets to show off all her very impressive breakdancing moves and punctuate them with bursts of fireworks. And of course, throughout all of this, Elementum's drumming not only keeps the rhythm, but makes the audience feel the music in a way that the recordings of the songs you're performing to can't on their own. And this, of course, is all leading into your final original number, the one that Jaden wrote for you all. And I, I don't know if we said this on mic or not, but that song is, of course, titled I Am The Violence. And we're gonna roll idle activities now to see how well you all do with the big final move that you've all practiced for it. Let's hope that shows in my role. <laughs> I have not been lucky this, <laughs> this session. So to read the move again, idle activities. I have to say it the right <laughs> way. When one or more team members work on an idle related activity, everyone participating says what they're doing and a representative for the group makes a flat 2d6 roll. And we give modifiers based on the answers to the following questions. Add plus one to this roll if the whole team is working toward the same goal. That's a, I think, I think yeah. they are. Yep. Add one to this roll if at least one participant has no conditions marked. Yep. Nice. Mm. Plus two. Subtract one if one or more members have spoken out against the activity. That's a hard no. Mm -hmm. And subtract one from this roll if all participants have at least two conditions marked. So that's a no. So you get a plus two on this roll. Plus we got a rolling plus one from practicing this big finish specifically. Yes, yes you do. So you get a plus three total. Oh, great. Uh, so who wants to roll plus three? Mm, I don't trust myself. <laughs> <laughs> this could be your moment of redemption. Oh, it could be my moment where I ruin everything. <laughs> I did it for mm. the rehearsal one, so I'm, it'd be cool to step aside for someone else on the team. I'll, I'll do it. All right. Yeah, yeah. Jaden just makes the most sense as it's also the song that he wrote. I think so. Yeah. You're the drum bit. And you wrote the song. Oh, okay. I'm very nervous. So the plus what? Plus three? Plus three. Yes. Nice. Oh, that was, thank goodness. Are we allowed to add a team to make that 10? Yeah, you did get one more team point. Yes. <laughs> yeah, so you can add a plus one to make that a full 10. Thank goodness. On a 10 plus, your idle activities truly sparkle. Please describe for me how this final number starts to wrap up. starting to loosen up compared to how she started very stiff and throughout this number has been more loose and just like she did before in the practice, takes her sword, spins it in the air, strikes it down in the center of the stage, giving a center point for the rest of the group to gather around. In fact, when I go off the drums, as I see like the mute starting, Rock kind of starts like crawling up me and encases me by keep drumming and then I kind of slip out of like the rock cocoon and my construct keeps drumming as I get off and <gasps> prepare for the finish up. Yes! I'm not even going to ask you to do burn for that, just, you just do it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Angie and Queen Bee get into position, Jaden moves up behind them. They do their big cheerleader lift, raising Jaden into the air. Is there any special flourish that happens as you guys do that? Fireworks. Yes. <laughs> I mean, as well as well, I guess I boy fire a little bit. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Once you're up in the air, Valerie's got her sword in the ground. You've lifted Jaden up in the air. 
fire coming from Jaden's hands, fireworks shooting out all around you. Queen Bee in like a, a great pose as she like holds her side and you finish in this like fantastic pose that will absolutely be everywhere on social media the next day. did it y'all <laughs> yeah that was wow. actually oh incredible my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah i think that's it i think that's it i think that's where it ends <laughs> yeah oh wow oh. <sighs> okay. that was nerve-wracking <laughs> that was a really fun episode to play yeah yeah wow yeah. angie was a monster <laughs> i didn't miss a single blow <laughs> Angie and Queen B. <laughs> My God, it's true. You were ridiculous. Well, it definitely like makes sense. You prepared the heck out of yourselves for this. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I think Sagittarius was still reeling from the last encounter and not feeling at their best. Mm -hmm. I do want to say that a thing I noticed after the fact, but I think is really appropriate, is that every one of us had to work together to get Diana off the stage first. Nice. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. 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 Because Valerie pressed her, and then Jaden helped Angie attack her, and then Queen Bee knocked her off, right? Yeah. 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 Oh my god, yeah, she, yes. Yeah. yeah, no, that's wow. true. And I rolled so luckily tonight that I'm kind of glad Angie went in guns blazing without thinking things through. And uh, <laughs> because that plus three yeah. danger definitely <laughs> paid off. Yes. For a minute, I felt bad for Sagittaria because we were just destroying them <laughs> <laughs> like I, I I played Queen Bee as ruthless because I think Alan got a taste for blood oh for sure mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's perfect but then they hit Valerie so no mm -hmm. no mercy yeah I really appreciated that shared anger over secret identities mm -hmm. too because we kept using team I didn't actually miss any of my roles yeah I don't think it I think only Jaden did. Yep. <laughs> and it was only because we were all distracted by Diana. I'm sorry, I kicked you with a pony dress. <laughs> it's completely fine. That was great. There was a reason she was asked not to use her powers. <laughs> it's fine. I thought it was a great chance for Jaden to not be happy-go-lucky all the time. I thought that was fun. <laughs> yeah, that was really mm -hmm. good too. Oh, yeah. I think so. You know you fucked up when... Uh, Jaden isn't smiling. <laughs> you know, when the always smiling kid is not smiling. Yeah. <laughs> Can I add just one little thing? Oh, sure. At the end of everything, when Queen Bee gets home, she's so just overwhelmed with everything that she just goes to bed without de-transforming. It's the first time. So much for listening to Super Idols RPG, and thanks to the wonderful cast of today's episode. Valerie slash Violence Violet was played by Dane Alexa, who can be found on Twitter at Author X. Angie slash Bane Raven was played by T. Jaden slash Elementum was played by Drac, who can be found on Twitter at Draconics. Alan slash Queen Bee was played by Luca, who has an in-character Twitter at Queen Bee. 15160871. Dialogue and cleanup editing was done by Kathleen Childs, whose work can be found on the Sword of Symphonies podcast at peachgardengames.com. GMing, final editing, and mastering was done by myself, Aaron Cerise. You can find me on Twitter and YouTube at Aaron Cerise, and you can find more information and art for Super Idols on our website at superidolsrpg.wordpress.com. Special thanks go to today's featured VIP patrons, Rain Crystal, Wolfie, Jordan Cuttlefish, and Cedric and Charlie. This campaign is played using Masks, a new generation, written by Brendan Conway and published by Magpie Games, with custom moves by Aaron Cerise and Zach P. The music for this episode's cold open is Towel by Adrian Beringer, and our ending theme is Born to Drive Me Crazy Instrumental by Lance Conrad both under license from Storyblocks.com. All other incidental music and sound effects for this episode are licensed from Storyblocks.com, 
freesound.org, and the YouTube Audio Library, with the exception of I Am The Violence, which was written and performed for Super Idols by Street Sorcery, who can be found at streetsorcery.bandcamp.com. Super Idols RPG is a proud member of Be Gay Roll Dice, a network for RPG podcasts made by LGBTQIA creators. You can check out all the great independent queer shows on our network at twitter.com slash begayrolldice. Stay tuned for a promo from our network partner, The Junket Podcast. Thank you all so much for listening to the first arc of our show. Stay well, and goodbye until next arc. The year is 2225, and the end of the universe is nigh. Welcome to the Junket Podcast. The Junket Podcast is an actual play and really gay TTRPG adventure currently running the Maelstrom campaign, a science fiction take on Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition featuring spaceships, space aliens, and a whole bunch of space gays. Follow a found family of misfits and miscreants on a cosmic caper that features science and magic, love, loss, and a whole lot of laughter. Who knows, maybe they'll even save the universe or something along the way. Did that tickle your fancy? If it did, new episodes launch every other Thursday at 5pm GMT on all major and minor podcasting platforms. See you soon in the Maelstrom Galaxy.